All right, welcome to another episode of the Wrestling Retrospective. I'm your host, Ernest E.J. Christian. We're going to continue our dive through 1988 of Saturday Night's Main Events with, of course, DJ Minter and Rob Burnett, two-thirds of the Mindless Wrestling Podcast. Fellas, I'm glad you got on this journey, man. <laughs> hey, thank you for having me again. Yeah, good to yeah. be back. Right for you guys, I, I I sure can appreciate uh, this like I can on this level, um, old school wrestling. By the way, Rob, I can't see you. <laughs> Oh, you know, there you are, there, I'm there sorry, you are. I, I switched. I switched. <laughs> I, I thought I thought he was hitting the lean for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I switched. I switched like, he was like dog. long gone. Like, hey, Rob, where you at, dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Uh, yeah, I switched tabs. I'm, I'm doing some of my you know numbers nerdery here. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, last time we were on here, we did the uh, the first episode of 1988, um, January 88 of the uh, main event. We're going to pass forward to a month later. Um, this is actually the main event. Um, now, folks may not realize this, but even though it's, it shows this part of the Saturday main event block of shows on Peacock, on the network, or whatever you may have worldwide, um, the main event was actually a separate spinoff, actually, of, of the Saturday main event. Um, it, it was actually once, it was held every once a year in February. It was kind of the lead in the, to WrestleMania. Sort of the, the the last show, one of the last shows, main shows of WrestleMania. Remember, this is this is pre uh, monthly pay per views, so we are still you know wait years from that. So um, a couple of things here, um, some things to uh, consider on this episode. This episode of the main event took place and aired live on Friday, February fifth, nineteen eighty eight, at eight p.m. Eastern from the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana. That was home of the Pacers at the time. Boo. I hate the Pacers. <laughs> the live yeah, broadcast. Yeah, I know you do too, Rob. <laughs> the live broadcast drew a 15.2 Nielsen rating and 33 million viewers. Both records for wow. American televised wrestling. Again, 1988. Different time, different era. Again, as, as I mentioned, the event was a spinoff of a Saturday Night event and was held only one time a year, with the exception of 1990, where it was held twice. And the equivalent to today's monthly pay-per-view events. Now, this show will only go an hour. Um, and we only have two matches, but it is the two biggest feuds at the time highlighted here. Of course, um, first off, the IC title match between the Honky Tonk Man and Macho Man Randy Savage. You, you, you see the ascent of Randy Savage on the way to the world title, which, you, which you'll get about a month and a half later. Uh, Honky is right now going through a legendary IC title run right now, currently. And then, of course, the main event, the the rematch, the big rematch of WrestleMania 3, 11 months later, between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giants. Um, I remember this event, obviously. Guys, you obviously a lot older than I am. Um, did you guys watch this live? I yeah. did. I did. I Big remember this is back. Oh, yeah, this was huge. Oh, yeah. This was a huge thing. And this was, you know, again, you talk about, you know, the, the time and date. This was way before, um, you know, Raw and SmackDown were ever even conception. So this was right. what you could consider almost like a WrestleMania go-home show. Yes. yes. You know, this is the kind of stuff that got you hyped up for that stuff back then. And that's all we had because we had literally like, what, a handful of pay-per-views every year and then whatever shows you could catch in between. That. Well, at this point, all they had was WrestleMania and Survivor Series. Now, they, they would debut SummerSlam, which, we, which, of course, us three, a couple weeks ago, actually did a, a, a watch along of the 88 SummerSlam. Um, but that would, would debut for another like a couple months into August. And then, right. of course, Survivor Series existed and Roy Rumble. Royal Rumble did happen the month before this, but it wasn't a pay per view yet. It was on TV. Yeah, it was it, just it an event. It, it was a match. Right. It would become it would yeah. become a it would become a regular pay per view to the year after. It's a nineteen. Yeah, because um, that was uh, Vince McMahon basically taking a shit on Jim Crockett because that was and it worked. They were running the uh, bunkhouse stampede on pay per view. The NWA was mm -hmm. that same night, so Vince ran the Royal Rumble on USA Network for free. That's right. That's right. Counter so, programming. Yeah, but then, but then, uh, Crockett got his revenge in March when they ran Clash of the Champions opposite WrestleMania. So, yeah, that mania was that, that, that mania four, but and I'm sure we're talking about it down the road because obviously, as you go to this 1988, they, this journey, we're going to surpass all the things around mania eight, uh, mania four. Um, that was one of the most polarizing manias of all time, given the, the format they use. Um, so anyway, on, on, on the call here, if you're not, um, not you guys, obviously, but the people listen to this podcast. Um, of course, you got Peacock. It is, of course, Sunday main event. Um, it is season four, episode two um, of the show. My wife was asking if the kids are asleep. Yes, they are asleep. <laughs> um, and 
if you want to, you need to pause before to get started to keep the keep up the event. Pause this podcast first before we, uh, before we get started. Otherwise, fellas, ready to go in another adventure? Yes, Cause, sir. Because th- this uh, this event is a inflection point in wrestling history. Obviously, this event, and we'll see as we wa- we're watching. Obviously, so otherwise, we will start it in five, four, three, two, and away we go. There's my woman. There's my woman. Look Liz. at that lady. Honky. Dude, I'm sorry. Top three IC title, IC title champion all the time. Absolutely. I, I don't know whether I said it on here or one of the other podcasts that I was on last week. I will stack the importance of this reign up next to anyone. Yes. Same here. The only two guys I might even consider ahead of him is either the Miz or uh, honestly the Warrior. That's it. Yeah. Did you uh, guys watch the Andre the DeAndre documentary on uh, HBO Max? No. Did you finally watch that. it? Did you finally watch it? Oh God, it was so no, good. No. Well, well, hold on. I told you to watch it, DJ. You, you did. You, you, okay, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I already watched it. I'm, you're you're four years. You told you're me. five years late, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it five years ago. <laughs> Baby oil. Baby oil. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> I told you. Yes. <laughs> Baby oil, get out! By the way, you see Hogan there? That will be the last time. Baby oil. <laughs> it's, it's oh, yeah. time just, I mentioned the last time we did this podcast um, that belt will be retired. We'll see Wingo for the first time this on this event also. Um, by the way, you notice um, Ted DiBiase in the intro with um, with uh, Andre. You guys remember yeah. this? I'm sorry, this is remember this. Um, Bobby Heenan sold his contract to DiBiase at the time. Yes. yes, and the the point was for DBS to get the title off on of uh, off of Hogan. Uh, DBS tried to buy the title months before this. Hogan said no, and of course, so now he wants to get it through Andre now. Yeah, and he said he said hell no on syndicated Saturday morning television. Yes, he did. Was, yeah, man, that was stars. a big deal back then. Oh, it was, man. It was. I was like, whoa. <laughs> What's crazy is you're seeing like. The merging of worlds coming together, like obviously we saw the Mega Powers um, formally get together, like sort of like during during the Honky Feud back in the mania, the main event from eight uh, from October eighty seven, but yeah. they were never officially together until probably after Mania four. Yeah, but you've seen the worlds. These these were the two biggest feuds at the time in the company. I would argue. Honky Savage was a lot hotter at this point than Andre and Hogan. Well, yeah, because it was very obvious that Andre had Andre was on the uh, the other side of things, and you know Honky and, and and Savage just Honky being look at this hat, look at this shit. The Je- what is Jesse wearing? What is this? Jesse, Jesse gives no fucks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love Jesse. Like we, we can talk bro. great commentary teams. I loved listening to Jesse Ventura give Vince McMahon hell. Yeah. Yep, doing it right now. Yep. Doing it right now. Um <laughs> But yeah, this is these were the 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 feuds. These were the feuds of, of the time at this point. The two feuds. Um Sav- well, obviously I, you know I've Savage. Been- no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I was always a big intercontinental champion fan. Like, you know, obviously I loved Hogan, loved the main event, loved the, the world champion, but my guys were always intercontinental guys. I've always been a mid-card guy. Mm-hmm. Now, you guys watch this live. Did you guys have a feeling that Savage was on the way up to the world title at some point? You, you, what, 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 I had no idea. What was your nope. thinking at the time? Okay, okay. I thought, <laughs> nope. Now, nah, I had a feeling Hogan was going to lose. On, you, oh, you, oh, you did? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of just, yeah, I kind of had a feeling that it was going to happen. Um. Because I just kind of felt like, why do this? Why do this match in in February? Yeah. By the way, oh, the this Hogan training Hulk. montage. By the way, uh, listen to the music on this. If you want to turn it up real quick, that is Jake Roberts' uh, theme music. Yep. But yep. you want to start using it until after this. After yeah. this. Uh, but um, so I, I had a feeling Hogan might lose on this show, but I had no idea Savage was going to win the tournament. None. I thought that. You know, I thought Hogan. I thought Hogan might lose here, and then once he did, I figured, okay, well, he's going to win the tournament, and get it back. Because I figured it was just a thing they did, you know, because they felt the need to, 
you know, fresh, freshen it up, up a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Or to, you know, just, you know, just to put it, yeah, to put a little bit of a twist on, you know, things. And I mean, at this, mm -hmm. at this point, he's been champion four years in one month. Yeah. Like, for all you Roman Reigns people here, there's precedent. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's precedent here. Now, the difference between Hogan and, and Roman here is that, and, and I think Roman's even more impressive, is that Roman's doing this as a heel. Yeah. This training video is just incredible. Yeah, I remember yeah. just watching this as a kid. Like, dude, I want to be like this guy when I get older. <laughs> never, never happened, of course. But yeah, this is this is this is a uh, Hogan Andre two, and this is a uh, you know I mean, this this cooled off after WrestleMania three. It cooled off a few months, and then it heat up again through the King Bum, King Bum Monday Hogan feud a little bit. Yeah, look at those traps, dude. <laughs> Oh yeah, someone's on. Are you up to honky, ready? Yeah. The story is romance. This this, this, this is why honky great. He's having one of the biggest matches of, of his lifetime. This 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 match was built heavy, big big. This match also too. And honky's here talking about romance. Honky got it. He got it. He did. Sports entertainment. He got it. Heartbreak, okay. <laughs> this is, I guess, this is, this is my, this is my childhood, man. This is my comfort zone. God, Honky was so good at being despicable. Yep. Yes. And in an era where Andre and the Heenan family took all the oxygen out of the room to be making something this important. Yeah. That's why it's, it's, it's I keep saying you have to, like, if you're a wrestling fan and you want to see, like, Really great. Why? Why we say Honky is up on that ladder of greatest champions of all time? Why he is uh, the greatest one-time champion? Like trying to like holding the belt for fourteen months. Watch his entire run, and you'll understand why. That's the thing, and I think a lot of younger fans just don't appreciate that because they didn't live through it. When you right. sat through this and watched it play out in real time, and you know, remove the internet remove what you think you know about the wrestling business and just watch it as a fan, you appreciate how damn good this was. Yeah. And Jimmy Hart was also on fire, too. Was well, he was instrumental in all that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Honky Tonk Man, of course, uh, well, in fact, he's the cousin of one Jerry the King Lawler. Yes. In real life? Yes. yes. Wow, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Yeah, no, no, I never he's, knew that. He's he's, 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 he's his cousin. Is that Peggy and Sue? That is Peggy Sue, <laughs> also known as who? Sherry Marteau. Yep. Rob, you know the answer to this, right? I said, yes, it's Sherry Marteau. You know who that is? It's Sherry right? Martell. Sensational Sherry. Martell. Sherry. Yeah. That's right. And um, and she, look, she's my top five managers of all time. Yes. I yep. mean, just. Mm -hmm. The, yep, the way yep. she got physically involved in stuff. That's correct. Because, uh, you know, because women managers at the time. Yes, she was. They did not get physically it's involved yep, like mean. that. I mean, they mostly they stood outside of ringside and maybe they interfered a little bit. She would jump in the ring and climb on top of people and she took bumps. Well, Sherry was a worker, man. I went yeah. back a couple years ago and started yeah, but... watching some old AWA stuff on the oh, Peacock. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Sherry, Sherry could go back in the day, man. Uh, here he There's is. goat right there. Randy Poffo. Yeah. He, at this point, he was so over. Like, his, his he's, at this point, a baby face. No, oh, yeah. yeah. Baby face, cabbage. Oh, Liz. Mm. God, she was gorgeous. My God. I mean, can you find a more complete wrestler who does everything at close to a ten than Macho Man in history in history of his business? Promo check, in ring check, presence check, look check. Now he he ticked off all the boxes, man. Yeah. I would love to have seen peak Randy Savage versus peak Randy Orton. Oh yeah, mm. you know, like say Randy Orton maybe three to five years ago. And Macho Man right here, 
Yeah. Tear the house down. That's well, a right big here, event anywhere in the world. Well, right here to your point, right here is Peak Savage. I mean, 86 through 89, 90s is yep. Peak Savage. Yes. Yeah. I, I'll even say 91 to some, some extent because that, that Warrior match in Mania 7 was, is to me one of the greatest matches of all time. It's a classic. It's absolutely the, a classic. The fact that that guy can make Ultra Warrior look viable for, and not, and not, and not some like from quick, quick 10 minute match. That match went close to 20 minutes. Yeah. It was a, it was a real match. Yeah, I mean, um, basically back to back years, him and Hogan made Warrior look like a real. <laughs> Both of them did. Yeah, down the aisle. That classic WWF uh, logo in the background. I, I uh, man, I get goosebumps. Yeah. I watch this stuff, man. It is. It brings you back to brings you back to an innocent time of being a wrestler. Oh my fan. gosh! Yes, absolutely. I mean, again, I was turning. I was turning eight, um, in May. I was still seven years old. I was turning eight in May. But I, my, my fandom started around this time, though. Yeah, now, I had been watching for several years. I turned fifteen in September of this year. But I had been watching. I, wrestling on TV is one of the first things I remember watching with my dad. So it's. I, I would say probably between four and five years old, we were watching some kind of wrestling. Was it weird for you guys to to to, to see Savage as, as his face? At this point, was it um, weird? No, because um, I guess because he he had already started like once the steamboat feud ended, he'd already started moving in that direction. Yep. And um, so at this point, no, it was uh, it wasn't. I think for me, by the time Survivor Series '87 rolled around, yeah, you know, it, he was he was it. So cool he, he was. Yeah, I have a close friend of mine, guy I've known since like third grade. He saw Macho Man coming before a lot of us did. He was a Macho Man fan when you weren't supposed to be. Yeah, well, like, it's funny. Hey, it's at WrestleMania three. He was rooting for Savage over Steamboat. Right. What's well, funny because you watch Savage like even going to WrestleMania three. There was a lot of Saturday, even then, when he was like a full blown heel, because remember the, the guy was killed Stebo on on K Fave. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of Savage fans there too. You, you can see in the crowd, but but people holding Macho Man's hand, signs. So yeah, the the, the WWF already knew this point that yeah, at some point we have to make turn the switch. At some point, yeah, we got to do something with this guy. I, yeah, I, I do think. That, go ahead, go ahead, Rob. Oh, because well, and because uh, sometimes you have to do that, and now I guess the difference is back then. They still had him acting like until they actually turned him. He was still acting like a full blown heel. And yeah, one thing that kind of irks me to with today's a lot of today's heel wrestlers is you know they they're playing to the crowd and all that stuff. And it's like you're not supposed to do that. You know. Well, mm-hmm. like guys like Sa- everybody wants to be the guy like Savage or the guy like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, that's what everybody wants to be, and everybody thinks they're gonna be. And it's like nobody. Like everybody's afraid to be a real heel. I think this is one of the things like about Baron Corbin mm-hmm. that I appreciate so much is he doesn't want you to like him. Like he legitimately does not care. He's a bad guy. He's a heel, and he's okay with it. He's a great bad guy, though. He's a great heel. Right, and, and he, he, he is. He's an awesome heel. And he gives you, he gives you nothing. As far but as absolutely nothing at all. And he and because they're they're not supposed to give you anything, right? And. And just again, that's one, that's one of my pet peeves about modern day wrestling. Cause, Correct. You know, and, and one thing, look, I'll give Roman like uh, Roman changed his music when he turned heel. Mm-hmm. And well, getting you know, away from the shield completely was something that Roman needed. I think that was the last piece of the puzzle that Roman needed to fully evolve. Yeah. And and see Honky with the use the megaphone there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're about. I think you're about ten seconds from ahead of us. Uh, at least me, Rob. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Yeah, my fault. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I think I'm maybe a couple seconds behind the both of you. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen this match at least two hundred times. So, I, I, but, I, I, um, I can, I can script this match to you guys at this point. Okay, but yeah, just for me, uh, that's one of the things I just like. If you're working heel, you know, then you're. Even if people are inclined to cheer for you, you, you got to keep being despicable. And you yeah. gotta keep doing you know crappy stuff. And 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 you you know you, you can't you, know, you can't play to the crowd. You're not supposed to play the no. crowd, you're not supposed to try to get those people to like you. Cause um mm-hmm. um I, I, I was watching a somebody took a video from one of the house shows over the weekend and there was um mm-hmm. 
is a match between this EO, Charlotte, and Oscar. And, you know, in, at different points, EO is playing to the crowd. And I'm just like, will you stop? That That's hurting your baby faces. Yeah, like, like please stop. Okay. Yeah. Stop doing that. Stop, you know, stop clapping your hands when you get on the top rope when you're about to do something. Stop waving the people. Stop. Will you please stop? Like, you're not supposed to be doing that, you know? God, everything Savage ever did was high intensity. That dude oh, only yeah. knew one. He only knew one gear. Yeah, he, yeah, he was full speed all the time. To your point though about Savage turning face, I think I, I think that pl- everything we said there plus a, a confluence of things happened also too. Steamboat, well, who was probably the number two baby face in the company at this point, um, in eighty seven anyway, a year a year earlier, um, had to go away. Um, yeah. so you need someone to fill that spot. Um, and with Hogan also going away. Around this time, after Mania Four, you needed to start figuring out, okay, who's the next guy in line that can hold the belt or hold, you know, be the number one guy for a while. And I think they, Savage, you know, I, I'm I'm sure they're going to turn face anyway. But I think the confluence of those things that happened between Steve-O going away to have his have his kid, um, between Hogan going away eventually, and you got you obviously got you got to think long term for this thing too. You got to think long term. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you're looking at about a year or two years of, of booking here. Um. I think what got Savage in the position. I, I think I think what happened anyway, but I think I think those things made made the the, the shift quicker. Because there are a few guys that they just couldn't keep heel. They couldn't keep Savage heel. They couldn't keep Jake heel. Yeah, Jake turned also too. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, eighty seven was a weird year because eighty seven a lot of guys were faces turned heel and vice versa. Andre went went heel that year. Um, you know, Jake turned to a face that, that year. Andre turned to a face that year. Honky turned to a heel that year. Actually, Honky was a, was a, actually, Honky started eighty seven as a, as a baby face. Yeah, and turned heel and, um, with Jimmy Hart in January that year. And then, um, you know, then the and then the year before, towards the end, you know, Piper came back. He turned face because he was another yeah, one. You correct. Couldn't, you just, I mean, you, you just you could not. I mean, and Piper did some really, I mean, <laughs> horrible, despicable stuff as a heel. Yeah. But I think even they knew that you couldn't, you know, you couldn't keep that going forever. Yeah. Here's a good here's a good uh, question though. Um, Piper better heel, better face because that's, I, I think that's something you, you can cut it for. A better heel, oh yeah, yeah. He's a better heel. Although I did like just maybe because it was nostalgia, his uh, baby face tag team run with Ric Flair. What about 10, 12 years ago? Mm-hmm. I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the uh, the Piper baby face run, but definitely more effective as a heel. Yeah. So bigger, I agree with you on that. So so I agree with you on that. I agree that Piper was a better better heel. But after 86, he was never a heel again ever in his career. No. To my knowledge. No. And I didn't really I don't really care for 85 WWE. To me, it was the 86 that I started really enjoying the product. You start seeing a shift in, in, in the athleticism one of some of these wrestlers. Um so I, so Piper's run early with with Hogan, it's Hogan eighty five, can't yeah. really appreciate as much, and most of my exposure to Piper was really as a babyface, even though, even though I know how good he was as a heel, especially the stuff with Snuka and the stuff with Hogan and Mr. T, <clears> yeah, and all that. Well, but Rob, Rob Piper, and I grew up with him smashing Snuka over the head with a pineapple. Right there you yeah. go. Yeah. So you know that's that's the first, that's where I was introduced to Roddy Piper. Same, yeah, and, uh, and Piper and, right, but and Piper retired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But well, Piper retires to WrestleMania three. He retires as a, as a baby face. He comes back as a baby face. Yeah, and he stays baby face the whole, the whole run. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he was. I wonder why. He well, he just one of those like he was infectious, you know, and you couldn't like. I think I mean you could I mean he got booed against Hogan, but yeah you know, he but after he, you know but anybody else like. You were going to cheer the guy. I mean, because he was just—he just had that infectious energy, and so once he didn't have, you know, once he and Hogan were done feuding, like you couldn't really put him against any other baby faces. It just wasn't going to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that. I w- I thought Savage won a title this at this time. I thought Savage won an IC title at this point. It, I I thought it was Savage. going down this night too. Like I genuinely thought this was Macho Man's night. I mean, he, he he was champion up until eighty three. Lost the steamboat. Steamboat is the honky in June of eighty seven. And, and honestly, you know, in hindsight, this should have been a tale that 
him not winning the title here. Right, 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 right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> but being kids, we didn't think about. Oh that, no, man. we didn't know. We just no. watched what we saw on TV. Right. Oh yeah, exactly. But, if I mean, this happened today, we'd be hearing on the internet about how Randy Savage just got buried on live TV. Yeah. 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 You know, what are they doing? He should go to AEW. You know. <laughs> Right? <laughs> so a couple things have, uh, here with Savage too also, that, and you'll, you'll see at the end of, the, of this of this match, a couple things that got Savage over, 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 over every time. So in, 80, in 87, obviously, Honky, you know, the start of this feud, Honky and, and Savage, the whole thing with Liz being pushed to the ground, that helped with his baby face. Right? Yeah. And you'll see at the end of this match here too, him becoming a gentleman to Elizabeth, that puts a little more of a sparkle. That's that's that's, that's another tell. That, that that's priming this guy to be the guy. It was the right move for the record. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. well no, yeah. Because, and, and I think it helped Hogan too because I think the people the people tired of Hogan. I thought and I thought Hogan, I thought I thought I actually think Hogan's. Non-title run this year when he was a title and for the next year, very underrated actually. Some good feuds. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, it breathed new life into him, getting getting that yeah. him away from that that world championship belt because even by that point, you know, I, while when the match we're going to watch later, I had my thoughts, you know, being fourteen going on fifteen, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and how the match ends and everything like that. It. I, I was almost over Hulkamania at that point. And not that I didn't like him, but I wanted something new. For a little while, at least. See, so at 15 years old, that makes sense. Me, at 8 years old at this point, I'm all Yeah, you're all still a full stark raving mad yeah. Hulkamaniac. Yeah, damn right. Now, he still had me for maybe a, a, a year and a, until maybe like 80. I, I didn't really turn until like 89. Yeah, I was still, I was still in the Hogan camp here at this point. I can understand A9 being a little tired of Hogan at this point. Well, because uh, um, I think it, well, cause it, cause that's when it got to that point where now, like, he was just, you know, you know, you know burying the roster, I guess. Not really, but it's just he was beating so many people. And then, and then eventually, you know, some people came over that I liked from other companies and he started beating yeah. them. Yeah, like when he, like you know, Bad News Brown, right? That's when I was like, okay, love Bad News Brown. In hindsight, love. Yeah, yeah. Right, this, 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 this is the branding one for Savage. Here. This this is the tell another tell here. Being yeah. Elizabeth, because remember the, go, before that it was the opposite way. Liz was always doing things for Savage. Yeah, and, and now um, Savage is being the gentleman now. Yeah, and um, so like when I think when when he beat Bad News Brown, that's when I was like, okay, this is too much because I really like Bad News Brown from from um. Where he had been before, I think like Florida or whatever. They that mm-hmm. came on cable for a while around my way, so I had seen him. I really liked him, Bad News Brown. So then when it, when he beat Bad News Brown, I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. I also I saw go ahead, go ahead. Hogan and Bad News Brown at a house show in Orlando decades ago, and this was the match. Bad News Brown came out. Hogan came out. Hogan's posed in the ring. Bad News Brown hits him in the back of the head with a ghetto blaster. Grabs the WWE Championship, and this is when after Hogan won it back from Savage, and mm-hmm. like leaves, like leaves with the belt, right? Like I won, I've got the belt, I'm the world champion. He leaves, and Hogan's laid out for what seems like forever. It was probably realistically only about three to five minutes, mm-hmm. but it feels like he was laid out forever. And I'll find you know the referees doing a count out, and then they finally say, you know, Bad News Brown doesn't return to the ring. Um, and you know, by the count of 10, he's getting fined and suspended by the World Wrestling Federation, and he comes back out, and then they go into the typical Hogan, you know, comeback match. Like, but, but like that was the match. So Hogan spent two thirds of it passed out in a face bump from the ghetto blaster. It was hilarious. <laughs> I love uh, Benny Brown, especially in hindsight. Someone could appreciate in, in hindsight, especially as a kid. I was like, who's this dude? Why is he messing with Savage? He was, uh, he was a hell of a worker. Bad yeah, he was, he was oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, look, it's playing Snow Dome. And there's the uh, Mania 3 highlights. Squash. To this day, I, I get scared when I watch this. Like, oh, oh my God, he, he got pinned. He got pinned. <laughs> Joey Morella. 
Jesse makes a compelling argument when you he listen does. to him talk about it. He really does. You're like, well, wait a minute. Maybe he's not wrong here. Here's the build up here. We a little bit. Of course, this we saw, of course, together on the last episode of this, yeah. on this podcast. Yeah. From the Capitol Center in, in Maryland. This was such a great oh. beat down. Yeah. Yeah. Look at those hands, dude. And then, of course, this, Bad News Brown was a uh, bronze medal in judo in the 76 Olympics. Mm hmm. Yeah, he was a shooter. Yeah. And of course, the contract signing here, this is, this is actually for the Roy Rumble. Jack yeah. Tunney. Look at that guy. Jack Tunney, Republican or Democrat? <laughs> oh, God. He's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, right. um, Jack that, Tunney, that, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, oh, wait, Jack, Jack is Canadian. All right, Jack Tunney, conservative or liberal? <laughs> <laughs> well, he worked for Vince, so I'm gonna say conservative. But, so um, yeah, so the, the the signing here, the, the, the this whole all this sh sh uh, shebang here with Andre and Hulk contract signing, this is uh for Roy Rumble actually on TV. Yeah, and um actually on um, the story with Jack Tunney, um, I think Bruce Pritchard told us um basically they needed somebody in Canada to basically run in, to to basically sit in a chair in an office so that they could operate in Canada. And that's what Jack Tony's real job actually was. Uh, was so, he like part owner when Vince bought? Didn't he like buy Jack Tony's shit part out too? I, it was like Gorilla Monsoon. Um, there was a handful of people that Vince bought out. Jack Tony. Okay, let's see. So Jack Tony was a Canadian wrestling promoter. Um, okay, so he was a, he was a Canadian wrestling promoter. Okay. So basically, Hogan's going three on one. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Virgil, Andre, and DiBiase sweating already, and it's just a, he's just cutting a promo. Where are yeah. they, man? Are they like in the shower room? <laughs> Some shit. <laughs> God, he's like sweating like a beast. Look at him. He's even DiBiase, working. And I got to say, real quick with DiBiase, he got to the promotion really like, like only a few months into this. He got there like late 87 and yeah. impact immediately. I'm here, and I'm challenging a champion. I'm buying your title. Like, what? Yeah. And that was such a shift in character for him, because I remember I, when he was in the he was in the Bill Watts' UWF before he came to WWF. So, it, I mean, it was a total shift in character. It was a total just shocking to see him doing this for me. Well, he was a baby face for Bill Watts, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I, I didn't watch any of his work before. I, I've heard about his stuff he did before, but I never watched it. And, um, I think I need to one day. I mean, the story behind uh, him signing there, like he met with Vince, and Vince said, "I have this character for you. It's great, but you got to sign right now. You can't go talk to Jim Crockett. All right, you have to sign with me right now." Yeah, he wouldn't even tell him what the gimmick was until he signed the contract. Yeah, look up, look up, because he didn't want him to steal it and take it. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he didn't want him to go meet with Jim Crockett and then sign with Crockett and then do the gimmick over there. Look, look so at that! Said, look at that! Got... Look at that back! Oh my God! Well, Andre, Andre's huge. Yeah. Such a big guy. Yeah, Rob, if you get a chance, man, watch that Andre the Giant documentary. It's I, pretty touching. It's you haven't, pretty wait, Rob, you haven't seen it yet? No, I just got yeah, keep forgetting, man. I, I didn't know it was Homework on assignment. Homework it. assignment. Yeah, it's on Max. Okay, so I didn't yeah. know that until y'all mentioned it last time. Yeah, Bill Simmons actually it, produced it. It's really good. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, the... Yeah, for me, the DiBiase character switch was just it was like, like, what's going on? <laughs> Andre who? Andre who? Yeah. And this will be the last time we see this belt ever again on TV. Right here. Yep. You mean tell me you can get Savage out there to help him out? You can get one of his buddies from Survivor Series to help him out? No. It's you, the Hulkamaniacs. You got yep. my back. Like, you moron. You've won three. Now, as a kid, I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, well, you can do it. You got you, got, you got big arms. You can take it. Now, as an adult, like, you're an idiot. You can help. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't have called Jimmy Snooker or somebody. Yeah, somebody. Hey, just in, just in case. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm getting call, not calling Paul Orndorff again because I want Paul Orndorff already betrayed you twice already. But still. Yeah. You got a whole locker room of guys in the back going, nah, fuck that guy. <laughs> He's on his own. <laughs> oh, 
And this is the end of the title reign here. Live forever. And it's Mean Gene. Okay, so like you, Tony ran the. Um, he was a. He was eventually running the Canadian. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was. It wasn't. Uh, they, he was originally aligned with uh, the NWA, and then, but then he see the belt. Yeah, he switched. Oh over. yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen, that is the birth of. This is the first the birth of the Wing Eagle belt. That yep. is crazy because they cut a promo with him wearing one belt. Right. He yeah. poses like he's off on his way to the ring, and he comes out to the ring yeah. with the new winged eagle belt. So glad I bought that replica belt. It's such, it's such a great. There great is no design. belt in the history of of wrestling in any promotion that ever existed that God recreated that's better than that belt. Not even the the big eagle belt they did the years later at Stone Cold's better than this belt. This is yeah. the best belt ever created in wrestling history. And one reason why I hate Warrior so much, though, is that he stained that belt, but put, put on different colors on it. Yeah, he couldn't stand into that. How dare it's like you? It's actual leather too. Like yeah. the strap looks like it's real leather. Mm -hmm. So Savage, I, I found out when he won a title, he used Velcro on, on this on his. Did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Up. I thought the Velcro was a more modern. Yeah, Hogan modern did band. the uh, snap. Hogan did the snap. So you learn so many things when you're watching this stuff, and you're do doing these watch alongs with somebody that knows what they're talking about. All right, people, this is the podcast, and watching what with us here. Keep on that referee, Mister Hebner. It becomes a big deal. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Could you imagine somebody who's never seen this before watching it from the like I want to sit down somebody who's like 25 years old, even 30 years old, maybe a 15, 20 year wrestling fan. And if they've never seen this, I want them to watch it just sight unseen. Just sit down and watch this and gauge their reactions when this match is over. Yep. This is because this is one of those seems... moments in time. Mm -hmm. You, you talk about inflection points in wrestling history. This night is one yes. of those nights. Yes. This was a catalyst for so many. This was a catalyst for three years worth of programming. Yep. It really was. Mm hmm The end of a legendary is the end of a legendary title reign. It's the the polishing of another reign coming up soon, you'll see in, in Savage. It it solidifies Andre. His only title reign he ever got was with 30 seconds. DiBiase is now, at this point, the biggest heel in the company. Yeah, coming probably. out of this, yeah. Yes. You know, so there's a lot that happens here. Here. Man, listen to the crowd. No, they're hot. Uh, you know, he watches the Jesse too. Also in commentary, it's like Hogan is like all ready to go. And he's like he's already tired. Andre is cool and calm and collected. Da, 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 da. Uh, Jesse telling great story. Jesse telling a great story again. This was my goat. What is it that ever took Jesse out? Because I know Jesse retired young. Uh, out of wrestling, out of, of physical wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. I never really looked into it. I I could probably Google it and know in like five minutes. But I think it was just, injury. Though. I always wondered yeah. that because I didn't he have that. complications from Agent Orange or something? I think so. Uh, let's see. Um, Good question. Now with the yeah. oh, Hulk's going to work. Hulk's a Noggin knocker yeah. on DiBiase and Virgil. Virgil's in the ring. DiBiase's in the ring. Flies in. And Virgil, sir, you're going right back out. Nice sell by <laughs> Virgil. DiBiase, nice sell. Over the top nice rope. Nice sell. Great. There's Andre. Oh, yeah, he had, uh, had blood clots in his lungs as a result of wait, and uh, he said the blood he said the blood clots were a result of Agent Orange. Yeah. Okay. Really? I thought I'd heard somewhere that it was Agent Orange, but I was 
it's one of those urban legend type things is the way I looked at it, so I was never really sure. I don't know if you guys when you guys I don't really, I don't know when you guys watched this match recently, but um it's which match you prefer? This one or Mania Three? Oh Mania Three, definitely. Yeah. yeah Mania I agree. Three. I agree. Uh, you you watch the documentary and you see where Andre was at this point in his life, Makes at sense. this point in his career. It yeah, it it's actually a testament to his love of the business that he's even in the ring right now. Yeah, his love of the business and his love of his desire to see the business move forward. So at this point too, also he's a part timer as well. Um, yes. So he so in eighty eight he feuds with Hogan obviously, he feuds with Duggan after this, he feuds with Savage. And then Jake later in the year to close out the year. Yeah. And um, because you could tell, like, um, at the WrestleMania, I'm, I, if you could watch the Battle Royal WrestleMania two where he won that one. Yeah. You, he at the end of that, he did not look, very, you know, very good at all. And that's you could kind of tell that. Okay. I think that they saw that, and I'm, I, I really think that they saw that, and they said, okay, we got to go ahead and pull the trigger on this match with Hogan as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, though, as a kid, I, I if you if he if he had if he had health issues that you, you couldn't tell. Like to me the way they the way they created Andre's image even here, yeah, he's slow yeah. because he's big. But you're not thinking that. You're not thinking, oh this guy's probably sick. No, this guy is is a threatening figure. And credit to Hogan too especially for making him look like a million bucks too especially and selling Andre being that guy still, even at this, right. at this stage of his career. Yeah, and I guess the thing is, like, if you go back and watch his matches from the seventies, that's when you could really tell the difference because it was, I mean, oh yeah, some of my favorite ones are him and uh, uh, what's his name? God, Stan Hansen. Yeah, well, Andre and Stan Hansen used to beat the holy hell out of each other. Mm-hmm. Because when he was, I mean, when he was younger, he was really, he was really mobile and could really move around. I'll tell you what, this match, this match, this match not, not really that great. It's just the moments stands out. Yeah, this I is mean, one of those matches where you're watching it for the finish. The yeah. Mania three is was great. I would argue Mania four match is actually not that bad either. The one, the, the double, double DQ. I think I've only yeah. watched that like once. I, I've... I don't think I've ever seen that pay per view more than once. Mania four, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, am I the only the guy? Day it aired. Am I the only guy that actually doesn't mind that? I, I mean, look, I'm gonna put in my top ten or whatever, but I, I, I love that. I don't mind that pay per view. It's a slog, I agree, but I don't hate it as much as people do. I guess I never hated it. I just I don't remember aside from Macho winning. I don't remember much else about that being memorable. Yeah, that's the thing. Just there, it, there was nothing really worth. Going back to watch over. like it was four hours for Macho Man to win was <laughs> was pretty much how yeah, I remember I, it. That's where I, I think that's where I dropped the ball on, on that. Well, uh, the other moment was demolition when the tie titles. That's it. Yeah, see that, and like, I'm, I'm 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 a I'm a demolition hater. Still. Really? Explain this, buddy. I'm a road warrior, Mark, and they were fucking posers, man. Stop, man. Please. No, no, no I agree. No, I agree. The posers, I agree. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't, I don't I don't disagree with that. They were, they were great value hawking animal, and, and it was obvious. Hey, Rob, here and, comes the axe. Here comes the smash. I mean, <laughs> they, they were, no, they, they, yeah, they were, I mean, no. And, and it turns out that that's exactly what it was because Vince, um, Vince tried to sign hawking animal, and they stayed with the NWA, yeah, you know, loyalty for another couple of years. Yeah. And so they, that's why they came up with demolition. I gotta say though, I, I mean, I know. Look, I, I agree they're posers, but I can tell you what though, th- that build from eighty-seven through ninety, for those three years, they were like I, 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 I'll say it to this day, they are a top ten tag team all time still. Yeah, I, I, I didn't impactful. dislike demolition. So I, I ask you this though, demolition heel or face? You prefer trash can? That's what I prefer. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> hater! Wow, he's a full blown hater. Rob is. I mean, look, no, look. I was the biggest road warrior mark there was, and I saw those guys. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" <laughs> no, I mean, Vince went out, and got him some imposters, did he? Yes.
<laughs> He's sitting there watching him, Jess. I don't think the referee sees it. Andre's blatantly choking him I with love, the strap. I love Jess. Did Jesse Ventura? Jess, he's insane. <laughs> Freaking DiBiase. I got a crowd on. <clears throat> Look at all these small moments here where Andre holding on Hogan's neck and, and, and on his traps. You know, today people can't appreciate that because it's, oh, well, come on, do something. Again, you have yeah. to sell Andre's strength. And Hogan trying to get through the strength. I mean, this is the stuff. This is the storytelling that is missing wrestling today. It's, it's, it, nobody wants the story anymore. They seem to think the story is in the moves. And the moves are cool. I can appreciate an athlete. Like, I can appreciate a really good, genuinely athletic person. Right. But you got to make me feel something in the match. And, you know, I don't feel anything. I can look at a move and go, okay, that was cool. I can look at a series of moves and say, you know what? That was really freaking cool, but I'm not going to feel it. I'm not going to emotionally connect to it. Right. Why should I care about this match? Give me a reason to care about this match. And right. that's the difference. Yeah. Hogan from the top rope? Never. Yeah. Second, ro- second rope clothesline. Hulk Hogan. Look at this football here. Wrong leg. Wrong side, Virgil. Wrong, wrong one. Now, leg drop. Yep. Hebner is like distracted by what we're running now. Hogan's pissed. Hey. The referee. Pay attention, you piece of shit. I had <laughs> I him like, beat. Here I comes like, Andre with the headbutt. Ah that shit fucking every time every time I say it, head hurts. Headache. Oh yeah. I I sat there, I think at 15 trying to figure out how he was headbutting without hurting him. Look at the, the worst suplex ever. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, but the thing oh about my, it, the and, thing, and he beats him. Andre with wins. It. And Andre wins. But and the Hulk thing Hogan's about it, four-year reigns over because was Andre was, because Andre was so big. The actually the move looked like it could actually do something to you. Yeah. When he was younger, he used to float over with it and land on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hogan's like, what the hell? I got Which, yeah. If Andre suplexes you and floats over and pins you, you stay down for three, buddy. Yeah. Jesse out here putting this over like it's the greatest thing ever. Look, even like look, look at look, look at how fickle he, he's like stunned. I was so pissed off in this moment because I was like, I wanted Hogan to eventually lose, but I thought this was such horse shit. Yeah, I mean this. I mean this was ridiculously overbooked. <laughs> it was overbooked to all hell. Even yes, mean jeans out there. I guess Hogan will be, will be posting tonight. And is Andre a champion? <laughs> Andre with the belt. For Andre now. <laughs> Hogan in tears. For now. Shortest title reign in history. No, shortest title reign is still Yokozuna, right? Who had a belt longer? Yokozuna or Andre? Uh, good I don't remember. It's, it's, it's in range. Just check out the Andre for at least a couple more days. <laughs> The myth of Hulk Hogan is over. Jesse's a gem. Yeah. And now Andre surrenders the title to, to DiBiase. And now he surrenders the title to DiBiase. Why did he just drop the guy? And DiBiase's champion now. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, 14 year old me is going, What the shit is this? What is what? Yeah, <laughs> and, and Hogan's going apoplectic right now. Well, you keep your ass there. And, ah! <laughs> I'm gonna sort this out on my own. <laughs> and look, look at the troll job by, by DiBiase. DiBiase is the best. DiBiase is one. I will say DiBiase is one of the top five heel all time. Oh yeah, yeah. And see now, this I knew. I knew about the Hebners because I because. Um, the other Hebner was an NWA referee up until this point. I yeah. had no clue. Did not know that. So when I saw them in the ring, like, oh, yeah, that's that's that's, his, that's actually that's his brother. <laughs> Who are these two Rudy Poos? <laughs> this is so great. This is great theater. Wait, and Hogan's like, what the fuck is this? As the kids would say today, 
This is cinema. Yep. <laughs> Who took the money? Huh? You? Huh? Hogan did a good job with this. Hogan did a great good job here selling this. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hogan views referees now. And you know what, though? The crowd's eating it up. The, cr- the crowd's like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. That, that's the best part. The crowd, again, selling the story. Make me care about this. The yeah. crowd's transfixed. Watch them. Which they are. We're going to get a ref bump. We're going to get a ref bump. Right now. Punch him. Was it Earl or was it Dave that punched him? <clears throat> I forget which one was which. Kick him. Kick him in the crotch. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in you, trouble. You sold out. You took the money. This he pitch him like halfway this, down the aisle. Dude, this fucker tossed the guy. Yeah, he tossed. tossed the guy. Kudos to him, whichever header this is. Kudos for taking this man because he flew like yeah. it seemed like twenty feet. They had to, they had that practice once or twice before because there's no way in hell he's allowing this shit to happen without practice. And he, to be fair, he landed on three guys. One is Andre. So if you, if yeah. you get toss, that's the best way to do it. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Run across the <laughs> ring and toss. But. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> they didn't even catch him, dude. He went right over Virgil's head. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> he threw him right over their heads. Unbelievable. That was incredible. Meanwhile, Jesse's very happy. Here's the third match here that we're not going to watch because they cut it off after the uh, the Hogan Andre debacle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we'll get we'll get a little bit of a uh, Andre uh, Hogan backstage here. This is the tag match between Strike Force and Heart Foundation tag title match. So we had three title matches, three titles on the line on this night. But of course, main event, unlike the Sunday main event, was actually a one hour show, not a ninety minute show. So yeah, they go to like a Hogan backstage interview. He's yeah, oh yeah, the best. Lose, and then, then they how took, much then money? They 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 yep. How much money the There it is. There it is. You know, he said that. I'm like, I don't see any money in this pocket. What are you talking about? Yeah, there's no money. <laughs> Look up. Crybaby Hogan. And it's been the plastic surgery, plastic man. Plastic surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Never my wildest dreams, mean Gene. Look at Green Jean, like, okay, we get it. You're mad. Of course, uh, next week on Superstars, the, the title will be, become vacant. Yeah. Because um, Tony is uh, and... having that. <laughs> Absolute chaos. Yeah. Wow. Yep, <laughs> and they're in the show. I wish I watched. I wish they could show this match in, in its completion, but unfortunately, they cut it off. Yeah, Strike Force, Strike Force does win this match, though. I know that because they retain the yeah. titles until Mania Four, and they lose to Demolition. Um, Miles Hero Tag Team. Okay, I keep the Hearts Demolition. were already in on the uh, the pink and black attack here. Yep. Yeah. I, I can't believe Rob's a hater of the Demolition. I can't believe that. That's crazy. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> There you go. That's the end of the show right there. That's One. it. That's a wrap, kids. Hey, they, they 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 do show the end of the they do show the end of the match here. They do send the, the pin actually, which is great. Was it, oh, I wanna, oh. was it, was this on purpose? You think though? Oh, I well, showed they, it off on my side. I thought we were done. Yeah. Well, they, right. I mean, they 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 had an hour live TV, so it was just right. I don't but, but but I wonder yeah. but I wonder if they 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 meant to to have three matches and then I guess everything all the chaos of the last match maybe it took away from the I I guess I don't know it may have run long yeah yeah 
All right, so that was our main, the main event from, from February 88. The uh, end of the Hulkamania's Hogan's first title reign comes to an end. Um, what are your takeaways from this one, from this event, uh, uh, DJ? Um, the back then, I was I would shoot hot over the way it ended, but uh, you know, we we really got some great stuff coming out of this. Um, like we talked a few minutes ago, WrestleMania four had some highlights. It's probably not well regarded as one of the better WrestleManias, but we. We're, we're heading to that road where Macho Man finally gets his flowers and we're treated to some good stuff in, in 88. Right. Oh, you, uh, Rob? Like, this was a this was a big turning point uh, because, you know, you know, Hogan losing the title and then, like I said, you know, about a month and a half later, we get Savage as champions. It was, it was a uh, it's big turning point and... It was kind of a transition, I guess, away from because after WrestleMania three, I mean, they had kind of run out of people for Hogan. Yeah, this is they, true. I mean, they were they were recycling opponents basically after WrestleMania three, and so they needed to, you know, and they needed to change something up anyway. But then you know, DiBiase came in, and then later on that year, the you know, you had the big boss man, you had Bad News Brown. So they eventually you had a kind of an influx of new heels because they yeah i mean because you know hogan pretty much run through them all but you know by yeah. the, by the end of 87 they needed some new blood in there and so they got it with those guys and then you know ravishing with rude so this was this was kind of basically kind of a turning point here uh, kind of a it was closing of one door and then opening another yeah they reshuffled the deck right. here and yeah. I mentioned this on a pod earlier. One of the things I think I think maybe Vince learned this, you know, in this '88, and then maybe in '90 as well too, when Hogan lost it again. I think Vince started to realize that there was still there was still value in Chase. Hogan yeah. was able to maintain as much as he did because I think once he lost the titles in '88 and then '90, he was still red hot. He doesn't need yeah. titles at this point. You can you can still do the same thing and try to draw other guys in the meantime. Savage, a warrior, and. um and Hogan could still be your top guy, even up, up, up the title. Yeah. I think they took the risk here, and it worked. Well, because now they could... go ahead, Rob. No. Well, no, well, you, you could do it here because you had Savage, but when they tried it with Warrior ninety, it, it didn't work the same because Warrior just wasn't as good as. Oh, it didn't work at all. Um, no. but I would argue that um, War. I, I think the Warrior not work was a shock because I would argue that as over as Savage was, um, eighty eight. Can you argue that War was was he more over than Savage? Given the kind of image he had, the the, the rock star kind of like. I, I don't think so. No. You don't think so. Okay. Okay. No. No. Because no. if he was, it wouldn't have the thing wouldn't have tanked after he won the title. If if he was. Um, you know, and, and one day we'll, we'll we'll do a DW on this podcast. This is why I love doing the show because it's a retro podcast. It's, it's discussion points about all these things. Because yeah. Savage, I it, it it never felt that when Savage was. It never felt like even when Savage was champion, he was on level with Hogan. It did feel that at times in 89, going to 90, that Warrior was on level with Hogan. So I'm just, I feel level. just the opposite because um, to me, when Savage, I feel just the opposite because you could see when Warrior was world champion that they were still, they were booking, you could tell that they, that they were, Hogan stuff was still more important. No, no, of course, no, no. What as champion? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying leading into Mania Six. I'm saying like when we, we it was clear that War was the next was the next guy. It's a matter of when they pull the trigger. It felt that Warrior and Hogan were on the same level. Whereas Savage, Savage and Hogan, even when Savage was champion for eight, that one year, it was still Hogan's ball game. It was still Hogan's playground. I think that was intentional because the end game there was always Hogan Savage. Right, and I think that may have been booking intentional. I think I think uh, the reason the Warrior probably felt more important is because he really in Vince's eyes was the next thing. A lot of people don't realize that even during the height of Hulkamania, Vince was already looking forward. There's a match on the, on the pot, on the Peacock. And I I don't exactly know how to phrase it. It's what they call one of those lost gems. Right. It was a guy who wrestled Brett, the Hitman Hart. I remember that one. The story behind this guy is it was the best match he'd ever had. And Vince was eyeing that guy to be Hogan's successor. Okay, they talk about it in this match uh, or in the uh, the commentary leading into the match before the match starts. Vince was already eyeing this guy because he was already looking for the next guy, mm-hmm. even at the height of Hulkamania. 
it's like, okay, this guy's not going to last forever. I've got to have, I'm thinking Vince, regardless of what people think about Vince, I mean, he relies too heavily on legends. He has always looked at that company five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So he was looking past Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania for the next big thing. And when this guy ended up, you know, obviously when you're in there with Bret Hart, you could be the shittiest worker on the planet. Bret Hart's going to make you look like a million bucks. And that's Damn what right. happened yep. here. Yeah. And then that guy, eventually they realized he ain't worth shit and, you know, he was gone. So Vince was looking for the successor to Hulkamania. I don't think he saw that in Savage. I think he saw that in the Warrior. And I think that's why right. presentation wise, the Warrior felt more important during his feud with Hogan than Sa Savage always felt lesser than. And, and, Hence why and the so, Right, hence why the letdown of Warrior is, is, is a lot more uh, noticeable. Exactly, here. exactly. And, and I think the Warrior was always going to be that guy. The, the money is in the chase. Once he got there, now what? Well, I think of him just he wasn't good enough. He wasn't a good enough performer to. Well, there's that too. And I think I was, that's what I think what it was. He just he just he wasn't as he was they, he was propped up. Hogan and Savage. Hogan. <laughs> they, I mean, he was he was propped up. Uh, he had a feud with Rude, and you know Rick Rude gave him his best matches. Um, that was one of the. I mean, that was the first time Warrior looked like a legit wrestler. That's when he was easily his best feud he's ever had in a company. Easily his best feud. Yeah, really and so cool. he was. I mean, he was in there with people who made him look good, and they and they propped him up. And I think he was just he was a paper tiger. And once he had to be world champion, it just kind of exposed him. And then you know, so I think that's just what it was. Uh, yeah. And yeah, then, one day, yeah, one day we'll do deep dive on that seriously. I, I, I'm, I'm very fascinated about why Warrior didn't work because Warrior yeah. was red hot in 1990, red hot. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. And I, yeah. I was a huge Warrior fan. Like I, I at one point was more Warrior than Hogan. I was Team Warrior in that match. Oh, oh no, me too. Me. Yeah. Oh no, 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 not me. I was Hulkamania. <laughs> Hulkamania. Well, to this day, yeah, we can say we can save that for another night. Definitely, yeah. we'll definitely, we'll definitely uh, do that as a what if or some kind of thing. Anyway, guys, yeah. thank you so. Uh, what? what? Oh, I was gonna say yeah, we we can do that because I was gonna say just in Warrior looked less than in contrast to Hogan, but then also, you know, on the other side of the street, Warrior's former partner was world champion at the same time, and he looked better than Warrior too. Yeah, so yeah. Warrior just looked less than compared to two different people, and yeah. it just I think he just kind of got exposed through all of and, that. And also, too, I think also too, another combination did, and that, that's what his fault. But the business has started to come down a little bit now at that point. In oh, and that's the thing. Yeah, that yeah, he, he, the thing. Yeah, the business was starting to drop off everywhere. Yeah. So, all right, fellas, that was great as always. Plug waves, you want to plug? Rob, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, so, uh, well, um, we're always every week on the Mindless Wrestling Podcast along with Jason. And yeah, every couple of weeks, you can listen to me do my own thing at the um, Rob and Genius Podcast. All right. DJ? And again, I co-host the Mindless Wrestling Podcast with uh, Rob and Jason. You can find me on Twitter at the Mindless Pod if you're so inclined. Excellent, guys. Good job as always. But, I mean, of course, next time we get together, we'll do, we'll do the March edition of of the Main Event, and we'll obviously react to what happened in February and and beyond because the, the story comes together full circle on um, the month after this. So, great job as always, guys. All right. All right thank you for having us.